Well, let's talk more about uh, women and uh, diversity uh, in these U.S. midterm elections. I'm uh, joined by Annette uh, Young. You're, uh, of course, the host of the 51% of France 24 programme about how women are reshaping uh, the world. You were in Washington recently, Annette, to look at, you know, the amount of women or the record number, let's say, of women running for Congress. Some of them have actually made it. They have indeed, and as we've seen there, I mean, an extraordinary result. I mean, this is a divided country that produced a divided result. And certainly in terms of the Democrats uh, regaining control of the House and the Republicans um, c uh, retaining control of the Senate. But the most unique takeaway from this election is that fact, that a record number of women run, more than 270. And at this stage, we're still obviously waiting for finalisation of various vote counts that are going on, particularly in the West Coast and in other parts of America. But, you know, we're starting to see some definite results there. And as you saw, those two Muslim American women who will be the first two Muslim American women to uh, enter Congress. Uh, also, Jennifer Wexton, a Virginia state senator who defeated incumbent Barbara Comstock in one of the most closely watched races uh, in the country. Texas is going to be the first to uh, send its uh, uh, two uh, Hispanic women to Congress with Democrats Veronica Escobar and Sylvia Garcia winning their races. And let's not forget on the Republican side, certainly not as many, in fact a very, very small group of Republican female candidates by contrast to the Democrats, but an important win for the Republicans with Marsha Blackburn becoming the first female senator to represent Tennessee and Republican Christy Noem, who's going to become South Dakota's first female governor. And when we're talking about the governments and the, the races to become governor, obviously everybody's looking at Stacey Abrams, as we saw there earlier, mm. especially given her support uh, from uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey. At this stage, it is a very tightly, tightly, uh, you know, uh, fierce battle. Um, we believe there's about a percentage point between her and uh, the Republican, uh, Brian Kemp. But at this stage, it's too close to call. And she's saying uh, that uh, her campaign is saying there's enough ballots outstanding, particularly absentee ballots from known Democratic strongholds. So too close to call at this point in time. All right, well, Annette, when it comes to these wins, let, let's think about in the long term, what that's actually going to mean for, for both of the parties. Well, I think that the message is clear, that diversity means votes. And at the end of the day, what we're seeing now is not only a record number of women running for Congress, but more and more women voting than ever before. And the numbers are going to keep going up, as is the case with millennials, which is why we've seen uh, that victory of uh, young people such as Cortez in New York. So um, what's going to happen on both sides is obviously both party machinery are going to have to think very carefully about 2020, particularly the Democrats. Should we field a uh, female presidential candidate again, given you know what happened with Hillary Clinton? Are they ready now to present another woman? to stand for the job. Uh, obviously, on the Republican side, there'll be a lot of discussion about how to boost the number of women when it comes to the next round of elections for representative uh, for the House of Reps and uh, the Senate. But uh, it's certainly the, the colour, if you like. The, the place is going to look really different in January when uh, those uh, people enter Congress. It's no longer a sea of men in grey suits. And that itself is an extraordinary result. Extraordinary, exciting uh, times. Watch this space, Annette. Thank you uh, very much for that. Uh